It's like having fish in a forest. Will this dinner be in the winner's circle? Prince and the Bear here, and today we're at Saratoga Springs Resort at Walt Disney World because they have a new menu. Is it going to be a winner? Well, as your number one choice of food infotainment, that's what we're here to find out. So remember, she's vegan. I'm not. I'm going to ride that horse. Let's go to the turf club. I heard the girl. This is a Peter London Spritzer. It's a non-alcoholic drink. There's like 0.5 in it. I was really interested in trying it. It sounded nice. Cheers. Oh. It's very tart for a uh, pomegranate. It's almost like tasting a fruit roll up with like like a raw, raw tartness to it. I like it, but I think it's just a little bit too tart. I think it's better if I stir it. <laughs> Let me just try one more time with stir. It's still really nice. It's tart, but it's really, really nice. I'm going to give it a four out of five. I don't know what you call these. Spritzers. Prince, 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 Spritzers. Spritzers. Disney. I think you're misunderstanding the definition of the word zero proof. Even if it's like 0.5% alcohol, that's not zero. That's how it is. Zero. There are some of us that can't have alcohol for health reasons, for lifestyle reasons. Label them correct. Label them correct. Mm. Actually, I quite like that. It's like almost like a flavored lemonade. A little bit kick, an alcoholic kick, mind you, but just like think like champagne sparkling after it's been sitting for a bit. I feel like a cocktail, but a mocktail. Mocktail, yes. Zero proof, no. Uh, yes. Do I know that? A lot of NA drinks aren't exactly zero, but the wording is important, especially when we're talking about food and drink. So, mocktail. Let's just, just stop the mocktail. Later. I'm giving this four out of five claws. If you're looking for a drink for low to no alcohol, this is it. So here we have the sparkling hibiscus. Apparently, there's been some update to the uh, generic hotel resort cocktail menu. So there's a couple new contenders. Maybe I'll finally find a replacement for smoked turkey. I probably won't. But this is the sparkling hibiscus. It's got vodka, uh, hibiscus liqueur, and honey in it. So none for the princess. More honey for me. I'm like Pooh Bear. I'm not gonna get my head stuck in this. Ooh. Now it's vodka, honey, and a grapefruit soda. Combined with that hibiscus no. before, that quite worked. It's a bit sweet to be my smoked turkey replacement, but it's given it's given country club. I'm feeling like I should have wore polo and some golf shoes. Three point seven five out of five plus. It's never gonna happen. A beautiful plethora of our lovely friends, the gluten-free allergy bread. It it looks a little overcooked. Chef Mike was working hard today, it, it feels. We do have Earth Balance, which is nice. <laughs> Extra Earth Balance because, well, Chef Mike. Cheers. It was really tough and chewy and really what you would expect out of the allergy roll. It's basic. I wish it had like a roasted garlic or something. This is a signature dining restaurant. They should have something to like zhuzh up their bread because it's, it's not it. I give it like a two out of five breads. It does not give good bread at all. I'll preface this with... We have absolutely zero pull with Disney. We are on a Disney media list. I don't think we're making a Disney media list anytime soon. We do food. Our videos aren't going viral. They reach the people they need to reach. Now, in terms of the people that our videos need to reach, we have a lot of Disney chefs in our community. A lot of Disney bakers in our community. I need you. I beg you. 
to come up with a better gluten-free, dairy-free roll. These things are atrocious. And I know that a lot of you have some very good ideas. Please, I'm begging. I'm literally begging. Come up with a better idea. This terrible, terrible cardboard in the shape of bread roll. <sighs> Those machines you have, like wearing on your hands, little springs in them. That bread is like this for your mouth. One and a half out of five plus. <laughs> Here we have the Parker House rolls. It's a new roll here. These are what the gluten-free, dairy-free rolls are meant to yeah, sort of like mimic. Okay. Like some springy, definitely gluten-ness, definitely dairy-ness. We checked. But these are new. They also have a new apple cinnamon whipped butter. Is it tender? I am lactose intolerant, so I can only have a little bit of this, but you had me an apple. And not the fun. Nice. Oh, that's good. You took a light, a light apple with a hint of cinnamon, so not like cinnamon challenge level with cinnamon. It's light, it's fluffy. It's a good roll. It's giving good bread. Cinnamon Prince's words now. I would give that solid four out of five for this. I used to come here and just get the artichoke dish over at the lounge, and I loved me those artichokes, but I love Brussels sprouts more. I'm excited to try a new Brussels sprout that comes with a beautifully seasoned lemon, and I'm not gonna put it on the whole thing, because I know Bear does not like lemon. And then there's some crunchies over here I don't wanna get. Oh, these are all leaves. Hold on. And the crunchies. Ah, I'm getting them over here. Here we go. Cheers. That's beautiful. I love the crunchies. I think the Brussels sprouts are cooked perfectly. There's like a small heat to it. It's like barely there. It's like 0.5 out of 10 on the heat scale. But it is really, really good. I don't think it's better than La Cellier's Brussels sprouts RIP. They're not there anymore. <laughs> But they do exist now, so I don't know. I think I think these ones in Toledo's Brussels sprouts are kind of on the same level. I would give them a 4.75 out of 5 Brussels sprouts. I would proactively come here for these. For sure. Well, here we have one of those brand new items on the menu. A plant-based crispy Brussels sprouts. They also have a crispy onion in this sauce. So like a little bit of lemon as well. I don't want to eat any good lemon. I'm a sourpuss already. I don't need any help being more sour than I already am. Brussels sprouts. I love me good Brussels. I love how they did the balance of the salty and sweet. That's key to the Brussels. The crunch on it, cook on it, roast, almost perfect. It makes me miss the Lasillier Brussels sprouts because those were like roasted, roasted. These are like 70% of the way towards there as far as like the cook. The flavor, I say, is pretty close to what I expect out of Brussels sprouts. I would give these a 4.25 out of 5 balls. Don't share these at your table, get your own. Here we have another new appetizer here on the menu. This is the yellowfin tuna ahi. So you have the yellowfin tuna crusted with sesame, an apple salad, some chimichurri, some little chips to serve it on, and then some sliced avocado with little cucumbers underneath it as well. So we're just gonna try to load up one of these like an ahi tuna boat. we get some of that apple salad up there, the crusted tuna. Can't forget about a little bit of the chimichurri on top. I'm gonna get a, I need a slice of avocado up here a little bit. Yeah, there we go. Just pile it on. It's like Legos, but with food. A cucumber, a masterpiece. I should be an Imagineer in my dreams. Ooh. I had some doubts about apple salad with chimichurri, but somehow they kind of work. They give it like a, a light funk. Not like blue cheese level funk, but like a nice bright tart apple. 
the savory chimichurri with the tuna and the avocado. Pickled cucumber, lightly pickled cucumber. I like it. Uh, love ahi tuna. This is worth getting. Best ahi tuna I've had? Probably not. But still a really good dish. It's a solid four out of five bottles. I'm gonna have no problem finishing this plate. Is it in your top five? I don't know about top five. We'll review that. This is the Federalist wine. It is the recommended pairing option to go with the entree. You can find this at Liberty Tree anytime of year. They do a couple of different flavors, flavors, versions. I think they can do the Cab and Merlot and. I think there's like a grease that they also have at Liberty Tree. They only have the one here, from what I saw. It's very rich and old and like full bodied, and hopefully it pairs nicely with the entree by itself. It's a very deep, dark, beautiful wine. I'd give it four out of five wines. It's tasty. Usually there's like a marker on the glasses for the pores. I don't see it, but this pour looks deep. Deeper than some of the V-necks in the Florida summer. That Zinfandel from Federalist. Smells deep. Full body. It's how it tastes. All the aromas. I expected that wine to be a lot drier from like the fragrances that I got. A little whiff. It was actually still fairly like, it's not light, but it's like medium. If you're like a really heavy wine, this might be it for you. Uh, I think it's gonna go well with something savory. Hopefully it's the princess gets, but as far as wines go, you can do a lot worse. 3.75 out of 5 points. I feel like we've been drinking a lot of margaritas lately. I've been laying off the margaritas, but Bear went ahead and got one. So here we are, margarita yet again. It's a nice margarita. It's perfectly balanced. Not too sweet, not too tart. Tequila is nice, even though it's not too prone. I like it. I would give it a four and a half out of five margaritas. We've had a margarita this good in a while. Part of this new uh, sort of resort drink menu refreshes this new margarita here, the Millionaire Margarita. And Disney, you had an opportunity. The Millionaire Margarita, you could have just called it the Scrooge and Duck. I mean, if I was going to drink something that tastes like a million bucks, well, that would be close. But it's like, it's uh, something a bit more than the key shine through. It's 1800. Respato? I like that. I, I feel it's like approaching macabre level of margarita. I would give it four out of five. Points. So here we have the new Hen of the Woods dish and it's got tofu in it and then all these beautiful veggies in here that looks like a ratatouille are actually from Living with the Land. Look at us. We are all just living with the lamb. Got some saffron threads in here. I am into this. So I, I think I'm gonna like do a little turn here so you guys can see the tofu. Look at how gorgeous that is. I'm gonna get me a little piece of this tofu and it looks, it feels um, crisp to the knife. Maybe it's been um, pressed. Yeah, it definitely looks like it's been pressed right there. Now I'm gonna grab me some of these Hen of the Woods crunchy tempura goodness. It reminds me of Takumi Te. And then some of these beautiful veggies from the land. I just wanna try it all together. These remind me of, wow, they're like spiralized noodles. It remind me of some of the dinner offerings you used to be able to get at Garden Grill. This is literally a zoodle. Let me twirl this, I don't have a spoon. Here we go. Cheers. That is really hearty. I love the tempura crunch. That is amazing. The tofu is cooked perfectly. Beautifully crisped with the wine. Pairs perfectly. 
is a beautiful dish. I'm not a mushroom person, but I love this. This is a five out of five. This is a princessity's item. This is a reason to actually come to this restaurant because there's really not a lot of reasons to come to Saratoga unless you're staying here. But now you have one. This whole plate is an adventure. It's given Sleeping Beauty Thicket of Thorns, but it's the hen of the woods. That's a briar pack. <laughs> And that's the sort of vibe I'm getting from it. With the sauces and the tempura, it's just giving that sort of look, that sort of vibe. Let's get some of these zoodles in here. Get some of the tempura veggie. This is a treat. And one of the prettiest plant-based dishes I've seen since, hmm, Jiku. The texture of the tempura is perfect. Breading's great. The mushroom result is a bit chewy. Um, if you don't like chewy food, that might be an issue for you. Texture, I was expecting to have texture issues, but it's fine. The tofu, the way that tofu is cooked, that's given, hey, we saw you giving so much shade on how good tofu is cooked at Tatuli, and we know we can do that to find out in your restaurant, so we did it here, the Turf Club, to get people to come here. You're doing a good job. Zoodles and the sauce, amazing. It ties everything together. It's really a little to dish and different and unique and there's no all meat. Look at that. Look how easy that is. This, four and a half out of five claws. If the texture of the mushroom is a little less chewy, it'd probably be a five for me. Here we have the lemon pepper salmon. It is one of the new refresh dishes on the menu. This one's completely new. Now for those of you who get scared, I know that there are some turf club favorites. Your prime rib and your grilled pork chop are still here. There's some minor changes to the base, but the basic recipe is still the same. For everybody else who wants something adventurous, we got some fish. So, take a little chunk of this here salmon. We're gonna do it up in the sauce. It's nice and flaky. It's got a nice sear on it. I'm excited. I was worried that they'd overdo the lemon and the lemon pepper, but it's just light enough. The complement the fish and I overpower. Lemon is a strong flavor, but salmon is always a strong flavor, but I want to taste both, which is what that is. I give the salmon four to five bucks. Now with that salmon, you also have a quinoa round here with some veggies in the quinoa. Let's give that a try. I'll admit, I don't love that. That is, um, you know how you go to Walmart, for those that survived off Walmart food or any grocery store for that matter, and you get the, the vegetable medley, which is like string beans, corn, carrots, and peas. It's like that with quinoa. Not a fan. Two out of five guys. Then, they give you a salad back here. Some greens, some tomato, heirloom tomatoes, a little bit of radishes in here. Let's see how that tastes. It's given your standard salad, but I love the addition of the spinach. Everything's crisp, it's lightly dressed. We got a three out of five plus. It's weird though, the salad could have been on the side, I don't know why it's on the plate, because it doesn't really, it's like having fish in a forest. It's odd. But I'm gonna try the salmon with the quinoa on the sauce and see if I like it any more. I love the fish in the sauce. I'm not loving the quinoa portion. The quinoa's not bad. It's just the weakest part of the plate. Salmon, I love that. I'm giving the whole plate 3.75 out of 5 bucks. I'd love to have the salmon again, but you can take this quinoa thing and do whatever you want. Flower and Garden, a new contender, has joined the Strawberry Shortcake Competition. <laughs> Cheers. Oh my god. Wow. And the cake has like a lemon into it. Ooh, that is the stuff that dreams are made of. That is good. It's... It's a little more um, flavorful than what you get at Flower and Garden, but the, the flavors are still pretty similar. 
I'm into the lemon though. I'm loving this. I would give this a five out of five. This is a princess item. <laughs> Though the creme brulee was also a five out of five, I don't know if this is better. I would say it's slightly below, but also very good competitive dessert. Like you can come and get this dessert. It's amazing. It's incredible. The yeah, dessert is a hat. A red hat. Red hat. I'm afraid to touch it. I'm gonna dig it underneath it. And the princess is a. Strawberry shortcake connoisseur. I love strawberries. I don't necessarily love cake. So we shall see. This maybe converts me. I can touch for the taste. Strawberry nice and cold. I like the room temperature with the ice cold. Works well. It's dessert. I don't think it's gonna convert me into a strawberry shortcake lover. It's good. You're wrong. It's very good. But am I gonna come here just for this? Maybe not. But I give it 4.25 out of 5. Plus. Here we have the chocolate cake. Now, you guys who've been here for a while know that I am not a dessert person. My entree is my dessert. I don't leave room for dessert normally. But the serving team convinced me that I needed to try this cake. Caitlin. Caitlin. Hmm? Caitlin convinced me that I needed to try this cake. Caitlin. Caitlin. Caitlin convinced me to try this cake. I am not a cake person. If you handed me cake or like a bowl of wings, I'm choose the wings. I'm just not a dessert person. But it's got a little championship medal on it and a little bridal and a little like horse made. It's, it's on theme. So I gotta try it. Question is, do I take part of the main or do I take them down? We're gonna, we're gonna be here. We get some of the little sauce stripe. And we're gonna do a big, delicious looking piece of chocolate cake. It's like chocolate cake you see in cartoons. It's like triple chocolate. There's like Cadbury eggs. But with chocolate inside, and then wrapped in chocolate. The third time, it's a very rich cake, but not too rich for we need another bite. Very moist, very delicate. This is definitely a shareable portion for me, but it's giving good cake. If you're trying to convince me to eat cake, it needs to look something like this, but like half the size, third of the size. Four and a half out of five plus. The Turf Club is marketing to turf. I gotta say, the entire experience was absolutely incredible. The first time that we came here was in 2019. Yes. And then we came and they reopened. Yes. This is our third time here, and they have definitely stepped up with each visit that we have been here. Doing a good job here at Turf Club, and they continue to re turf the turf. We're doing a great job, but giving more and more reasons to come here. Whereas before the Turf Club and even Adder's Palette was sort of like, eh, if you're over here. Now it's like there are reasons to come here, yeah. hang out here, eat here, drink here. Feels like home. I don't know when the last time you came over to Turf Club. Let us know in the comments below or mark your turf down there. If there's anything else you can see us do, of course, the comments will always be the place to find us. Hit that notification bell if you want to see other videos like this. And we have new videos five days a week, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Sunday. We'll see you soon. Be sure to subscribe and like this video. And if you don't comment, Bear might turn into a horse. Look at my horse. My horse is amazing. Give it a lick. Ooh, it tastes just like raisins. You heard the girl. All the princesses. Princess the Bear here, and we're back at Disney's Coronado Springs Resort. What?